So how about if you just go out and accumulate properties over the next year or two, 24 months run, and you're getting interest rates well <laughs> below market? You can't get a better situation than that. You know, Chris, um, since we've already had you on the show before and we told, kind of told, you know, really dove into your story, I think uh, I want to just dive straight into the topic at hand, right? Um, so what's the number one secret you believe about buying real estate right now? Should investors be buying it? What are you seeing? What's your, what's your feeling after 31 years of being in seeing multiple market cycles? Should real estate investors be buying real estate right now? Yeah, it's never been a better time, frankly. I, I was saying you off air, 31 years, right? I'm going on my 32nd year. There's never been a better time. I, I say that for a few reasons with no particular priority order. The cup, top of mind would be things like we have for the third time, third only in 50 years, we have an affordability problem right now. And that's with interest rates, not quite. They might be. I haven't checked in the last week or so at our 50-year average of like 7.7 .7 or 7.75. So if that if there's already an affordability issue, what's going to happen if and when rates creep a little higher? And sadly, you've got hundreds of thousands, I don't know the number, of buyers that have been pushed to the sidewalk that, Brett, you and I know like a year ago, nine months ago, they, they were ready to buy. They thought, oh, these are cool rates. And all of a sudden, boom, they're out of the market if they were on the cusp, you know, qualification-wise. So there's just this, this massive amount of buyers that all of a sudden can't get a home. Therefore, demand's starting to come down on all, with all the sellers. And that just screams loudly to creative financing. And think about this. You've got rates out there. We're buying homes right now with rates of like 2.75 to 4%. And we're buying them by simply one of our methods, which is subject to existing financing. So how about if you just go out and accumulate properties over the next year or two, 24 months run, and you're getting interest rates well <laughs> below market. You can't get a better situation than that. And sellers that were nine months ago, wanted nothing to do with it six months ago, wanted nothing to do with this because they, they could sell like hotcakes. They're calling now, like they're coming out of the woodwork now and some people are in trouble. So I could go on and on, but that one piece is driving creative real estate through the roof. So make sure I capture that, right? So for the third time in 50 years, affordability problem issue, um, uh, along with a massive amount of buyers that have now been you know sidelined. Yeah. And so what you're saying is, um, with creative financing, if you know what, you obviously know what you're doing, you know how to do it. Sellers are finally now willing to, more likely to do that now. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's like it was, you know, all the way until just when COVID got made the market go crazy, right? Because even even at the beginning of COVID, sellers were more prone to. They just got a little happy when the market went crazy, and so it, we're back to that point where we have to talk to a lot less people. That's all it is. It's not creative real estate operates great always. It's just that we have to talk to a lot less people now, and people need us. A lot more than ever they need a guide right now got it okay so um so step one is understanding understanding the opportunity right understand there's a lot of le less buyers that are competing for deals because they're at either, they're just kind of out of the market what would be kind of step two to to um understanding that now is a great opportunity to buy in 2023 you know what i talked with this on a show yesterday this is so important brad i don't know if we hit this last time but especially now where you have the potential to operate your business as an entrepreneur. I don't care if you have a W-2 now, we'll show you how to escape that. But you have a chance in the next 24 months to parlay some serious, like a decade worth of wealth. If that's the case, if I'm saying that, would it not behoove you to make sure you find a niche that suits you? In my case, creative real estate. I am not so naive to think it's for everyone. But find a niche that suits you and then find someone that you alluded to earlier that's been through different market cycles. I've been through several. And so again, if that fits for you, phenomenally. But if not, there's other people that have been through other cycles. The scary part is people see the opportunity here, they hear about it, and then they say, great. And then they stumble upon a product that doesn't offer them anything because people can market. And, or they stumble on something that's just new to real estate in the last five years. That's a scary formula. So just make sure that as a step two, that you find someone to latch on to, put the blinders on for a few years and make a nice run here out of this market. This is, these are the stories you hear about. In like four years, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, they amassed this fortune. Yes, because they took action when this, the media was screaming the opposite. That makes sense. Right, absolutely.